want to turn your HRG3 footage from this to this, I will show you how to achieve this cinematic color grade in four easy steps. Always wanted to do that shot. Okay, and now in all seriousness. In my last video, I showed you how I set up my Sony Alpha 7 III to get the best quality cinematic looking footage. If you haven't seen the video, I'll put a link somewhere up here. In today's video, I'll show you my Premiere Pro editing workflow to bring your HAG 3 footage alive. I'll show you my sequence settings, the LUTs I'm using, my color correction process and also my export settings. There might be a thousand different ways to edit your footage and in the past few years I tried several. But the one I'm showing you today worked actually best for me. A little disclaimer right up front, the LUTs I'm using are paid LUTs. I'm not sponsored and those are also no affiliate links. Those are simply the LUTs which work best for me. So this video won't be a deep dive into color grading. It's simply a very fast way how to achieve good looking colors in your videos. Especially when you're starting as a filmmaker, there's so much to learn and I'm trying to use as many resources as possible to simplify the process. There will be a time where I'll be upgrading my color grading skills, but for now I'm relying on experts which know how to achieve beautiful colors. So, that being said, let's jump right into Premiere Pro. All right, now that we are in Premiere Pro, you can see I already opened up a sequence and uh, inserted some clips from our recent trip to uh, Greece. Now, before you even start color correct and color grade your HAG3 footage, you have to interpret the footage. So what you're gonna do first is mark all the clips, do a right click, then go to modify, interpret footage, and um, you can see I already changed that. Uh, before it was like this with the um, Use media color space from file, which is rec 2100 HLG, but you have to change it to color space override and then go to rec 709, otherwise, you will get some burnt out highlights. Click OK. Uh, next, we will quickly look inside my sequence settings. Go here. Now you can see. Uh, editing mode is just custom. I'm using a 23.976 frames per second timeline, 4K 3840 uh, by 2160, 16 by 9, and the working color space is Rec 709, and the rest you can keep like it is. Hit OK. Now let's start with the color correction. So first of all, what you need to do, um, you can do it manually, but I'm using a LUT to convert the HAG3 footage into the Rec 709 color space. So what I'm using is a Leeming LUT, uh, leeminglutpro.com. Uh, the website looks quite old school, but the LUT itself is really, really good. So you will find all the different uh, camera models here and you'll use uh, Sony picture profiles and it also has a really good uh, setup guide. Uh, so in total it's uh, 50 Australian dollars. I think it's, I don't know what is in euros, 60% of it, like 30 to 40 euros or something. Uh, it's not super expensive and it does a really good job. So if you when you have a look inside the setup guide, uh, it also shows you really precisely how to set up your camera. So for example, your zebras, how to set up your zebras or your zebras if you have uh, like people in there, how to, uh, how to expose for skin tones and uh, how to set up your details and, and stuff like that. So it's a really good setup guide and uh, tells you everything how to adjust your camera to, to receive the best outcome with your Sony camera. 
All right, now we go to input LUT, browse, and then I use HAG3 for Rec 709. Okay, you can already see that the colors already changed a little bit. It's now a little bit darker and a little bit more contrasty. Um, and next, we open up the Lumetri scopes up here. And what we're looking for is this diagram. It's called the Parade RGB White diagram. So what we can see here is like with 100 the full white point and the full black point here at zero. And what we can do now is adjust the white and the black point until it clips up there. So increasing the whites. We don't look at these little ones, you know, and it's not that bad if we have some little points where it's like overexposed. It's more important that the main part of the image is not overexposed. So increase it a little bit. I can go even further. Somewhere like here, I think it's a pretty good point. Now we go to the blacks to so have a look at this lower part, reducing the blacks a little bit until it clips right here and now it's a lot more contrasty. I think we can reduce the shadows even a little bit. You see the shadows, the highlights it's only inside but not like the the highest like the white and the blacks. So we can reduce the shadows even a little bit further like this and the highlights we can reduce a bit as well. For the exposure, I think that is quite good like that. Uh, as it was a sunset, I would even increase the temperature a little bit to give it a little bit more warmth, maybe a little bit of a tint. Like this is good, I think. Now we go to curves. We put in a little bit more contrast, do like an S curve just very slight S curve otherwise uh, we will get like clip blacks or whites all right I think that's good the last step I'm doing is HLG secondary and sharpen the footage just a little bit like this all right that is already it for the basic color correction um, you can now look if your next clips look more or less the same and then do like a copy, mark all the clips, paste the attributes, just select the Lumetri color, hit OK and look inside. Now I can see this is way too dark, this is way too dark and this as well. So I quickly adjust the uh, colors now in, in my other clips and do a little fast forward here. Alright, now as all the clips are color corrected, we will give the uh, images a little bit more punch and for that I'm losing and for that I'm using the creative LUTs from uh, Niklas Crystal. I think all of you might have known already the name Niklas Crystal. He's doing really really nice videos on YouTube and he also developed his own signature LUTs. Uh, he sold them for 49 euros. As I said before there's no affiliate links. I'm also not sponsored. I just really really like the colors he is using in his um, in his videos and those uh, those LUTs from him really really work well on the um, Sony footage as he's using a Sony uh, S7 III as well. So um, what we're gonna do now is um, using an adjustment layer. I just created a new one so we can see it. Adjustment layer, uh, 4K, 23.976 uh, FPS. And now we pull the timeline in here over all the clips. And for now, we are using the creative tab. And I loaded all the LUTs from Nicholas Crystal already inside here. And the one I like a lot, especially like for those sunny, those sunny uh, shots, I use Sunkist. And you can see it's 
it's, it's way too strong for the moment. So what I usually do for the LUTs, I start at zero and then I slowly start to increase until I like the look. I think around 60, 60 is a good value, I think. Yeah. All right, that's here. I really like it a lot. Let's have a look at the other clips. This is good as well for this one as well. Let's go inside here. So you do see the saturation adjust a little bit, otherwise my face is a little bit... You can also reduce the uh, temperature a little bit, otherwise the face is just a little bit too yellow. Alright, I think that looks already pretty good. If you have a look um, how it was before, go to this, this was before and this one is after all right yeah that's basically already it how i'm color correcting and color grading my footage i really hope i could help you in some way make your uh, workflow a little bit more efficient maybe or give you some insights uh, which you didn't know before so uh thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye bye